Hey folks, welcome to the Uncommon Lectionary Podcast, a podcast for youth and young adult ministry within the church. This is your host, John Bauman. Hey, greetings friends. Welcome to the third episode of the Uncommon Lectionary Podcast. This episode is on the lectionary readings for Sunday, January 15th. This next Sunday, our church does not have youth group, but on the off weeks, I wanted to still do a podcast to kind of get some practice in in formatting my lessons and to keep putting the podcast out there. But first, a recap. This past Sunday was my first student ministry meeting where the lesson was using the lectionary readings, and honestly, it went really well. The students had no problem reading the New Testament and gospel readings. We did the popcorn method, and they thought that was funny um, because I started off with it. And they even kept looking back at the text as the lesson went on. Our night primarily focused on the topic of bullying, and we didn't get to baptism or confirmation like I planned. But honestly, it was such a fantastic time of sharing. And a few highlights from my week. Okay, so a few of my friends online and in real life complimented me on the podcast, and they were very supportive supportive of using the lectionary for students. They just thought that idea um, s- spoke to them, that they were thinking the same thing, or something along along those lines. The second is an adult from our church asked to sit in on our lesson because they heard the podcast was about bullying and they wanted to share their own stories and offer their own advice. That's awesome. Third, a parent actually told me that their child was not able to come to youth group, um, but that her and her child would listen to the podcast episode because the topic was important to them. And that made my day because this is why I'm doing this, so that the parents and the students have a resource, that there's better communication, um, and that stuff like this can happen. So her telling me that really made my day. Um, To start off our podcast today, I wanted to start with a prayer of confession from the Book of Common Prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. This week's scripture readings are from the Common English Bible. Isaiah 49, 1-7 Listen to me, coastlands. Pay attention, peoples far away. The Lord called me before my birth, called my name when I was in my mother's womb. He made my mouth like a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of God's own hand. He made me like a sharpened arrow and concealed me in God's quiver, saying to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I show my glory. But I said, I have, I have wearied myself in vain. I have used up my strength for nothing. Nevertheless, the Lord will grant me justice. My reward is with my God. And now the Lord has decided, the one who formed me from my womb as his servant to to restore Jacob to God so that Israel might return to him. Moreover, I'm honored in the Lord's eyes. My God has become my strength. He said, It is not enough, since you are my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the survivors of Israel. Hence, I will also appoint you as light to the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The Lord, Redeemer of Israel and its Holy One, says to the one despised, rejected by nations, to the slave of rulers, Kings will see and stand up. Commanders will bow down on account of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Next reading is Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. I put all my hope in the Lord. He leaned down to me. He listened to my cry for help. He lifted me out out of the pit of death, out of the mud and filth, and set my feet my feet on solid rock. He steadied my legs. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Many people will learn of this and be amazed. They will trust the Lord. Those who put their trust in the Lord, who pay no attention to the proud, or those who follow lies, are truly happy. You, Lord, my God, you've done so many things. Your wonderful deeds and your plans for us, no one can compare with you. 
If I were to proclaim and talk about all of them, they would be too numerous to count. You don't relish sacrifices or offerings. You don't require ent- entirely burned offerings or compensation offerings, but you have given me ears. So I said, here I come. I'm inscribed in the written scroll. I want to do your will, my God. Your instruction is deep within me. I've told the good news of your righteousness in the great assembly. I didn't hold anything back, as you well know, Lord. I didn't keep your righteousness only to myself. I declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I didn't hide your loyal love and trustworthiness from the great assembly. So now you, Lord, don't hold back any of your compassion from me. Let your loyal love and faithfulness always protect me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. From Paul, called by God's will to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from Sothesis, our brother, to God's church that is in Corinth, to those who have been made holy to God in Christ Jesus, who are called to be God's people, Together with all those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in every place, he's their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always for you, because of God's grace that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that as you were made rich through him in everything, in all your communication and every kind of knowledge, in the same way that the testimony about Christ was confirmed with you. The result is that you aren't missing any spiritual gift while you wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also confirm your testimony about Christ until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and you were called by him to partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The next reading is from John chapter 1 verses 29 to 42. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one about whom I said, He who comes after me is really greater than me because he existed before me. Even I didn't recognize him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be made known to Israel. John testified, I saw the Spirit coming down from heaven like a dove, and it rested on him. Even I didn't recognize him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, The one on whom you see the Spirit coming down and resting is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified that this one is God's Son. The next day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, Look, the Lamb of God! The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he asked, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? He replied, Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two disciples who heard that John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. He led him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The format for this lesson is I would have them read the psalm reading and the gospel reading, and I would reference the other two readings in the lesson itself. So moving on to the lesson, I'm just going to... Like I did last week, I'm just going to speak it like I would be giving it to my youth. Last week, we spoke about Christ coming as an answer to the problems that the Hebrew people had, and I related the surrounding wicked nations as bullies in our context, tying in the concept of loving our enemies and trusting God to do justice. Though we didn't get to it in the youth lesson, in the podcast, the lesson also was about starting our life of faith with baptism, confirmation classes, or simply by um, showing that you are committed to God by, um, you know, raising your hand or telling me um, that you want to talk about life or faith sometime. This week's lesson is about what it means to follow Jesus and what kind of relationship Jesus wants us to wants to have with us. So last week was kind of step one. This week is step two. First, I want to ask these questions. How many of us have ever felt guilty? 
how many of us, because of that guilt, have had a hard time confronting the person that we wronged? Maybe it's our parents, maybe a friend, whoever it was. How many of us have ever felt the same scared feeling in confronting God after we, after we did something wrong? In the psalm reading today, David started off with, I put all my hope in the Lord. He leaned down to me. He listened to my cry for help. He lifted me up out of the pit of death, out of the mud and filth, and set my feet on solid rock. He steadied my legs. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Notice something here. God leaned down to David, listened to his cry for help, and then lifted him up out of his hopelessness and completely changed his attitude by the steadying of his legs, like his legs were quivering in, in anxiety and depression and fear, all of that, and giving him a sense and a spirit of praise, of joy, of worship. But in the Old Testament system, didn't David have to make sacrifices first? Um, you know, the burnt offerings, the sin offerings, you know, like the Sunday school drawings of an altar and stuff like that. Well, David writes about that. He says, you don't relish sacrifices or offerings. You don't require entirely burnt offerings or compensation offerings. See, it wasn't the animals that David would sacrifice to make God listen. It was his honest, humble heart crying out and recognizing his need for God. So, like last week, we need to take that step of recognizing a need in us to come to God. But we need to then take another step, like David did in saying, I want to do your will, my God. You see, David then proceeds to tell everyone in the courts and in public and everything about the love and righteousness of God. So we can learn from this that we don't have to try to clean ourselves up to approach God. Like a dog who's been caught digging in the trash. We don't have to, you know, kind of sulk before God. We just come to a loving father who embraces us fully and tells us his will over our lives. And we come to Jesus. And after Jesus was baptized, as we read about last week and the beginning of this week's gospel reading, he walked past John the Baptist and two of his own disciples. And John says, look, the Lamb of God and his two disciples left John to follow Jesus. Now, they could have been following him for a while, like just a couple minutes or, you know, um, maybe longer than that. But Jesus eventually turns back and is like, can I help you? What are you looking for? They didn't respond to his question and instead addressed him as rabbi, which means teacher, and asked him where he was staying. Jesus welcomes them to follow him as they invited themselves to follow him to where he was staying, and they stayed with him all day. But what I think is so important here is, besides them seeking to follow Jesus in a radical way and leaving their previous teacher and following this new teacher, um, Andrew actually breaks off from the pack to find his brother Simon. And he told his brother Simon that he found this Messiah and he literally led his brother to Jesus. Jesus then renames Simon and calls him Cephas, which is a name we know as Peter. Now, Peter was declared to be the rock on which I I will build my church. In one sermon of his in the book of Acts, over 2,000 people came to faith. You see, in both the psalm and the gospel reading, we see people responding to God by coming to him, having a desire to follow him, and then having a desire to tell others about him. In the Old Testament reading in the lectionary this week, Isaiah was prophesying about Christ and said that this servant won't just restore Israel, but will be a light of the nations. In the epistle reading this week in 1 Corinthians, Paul thanked the Lord for the communication, knowledge, and the spiritual gifts of the Corinthian church. The church was still seeking the Lord's will despite its imperfections, which we'll find, which we would find out later. You see, God always wants to bring light to as many people who can see it. You see, God not only wants us to believe in him and to be baptized, but also to follow him and to lead others to him. Lead others in our families, in our friendship groups, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our communities. You see, God wants us to go, to follow him, and to lead others to him. 
The reflection questions this week, if we were to meet, would be 1. Do you think that there is anything that a Christian can do that would separate them from the love of God? 2. Does a non-believer have to repent of their sins before praying to God? Would God hear their prayers? 3. Do you have an I have decided to follow Jesus story? A story where you have just decided, you know what, this all is real and I want to pursue it. 4. Are there any Christian groups at your school, like Fellowship of Christian Athletes or something else, or maybe a private Bible study? Are you involved in them? Why or why not? 5. Are you open about your faith to others? Would people know that you are a Christian? Number 6. What can you do this week to 1. Seek the Lord's will over your life, and 2. Bring the light of Christ to others? To conclude, I would um, read the following scripture passage from Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, known as the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. Now we will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.